Hey, this is Voxide and this video will be all about the dot product, how it works and how to use it in your projects. If you want to learn Houdini, you can check out my advanced and more in-depth courses, link will be in the description. A dot product is a vector operation that basically compares to vectors and outputs a float value that sort of specifies the differences between the angles of the two vectors that are compared. So in this example we have some geometry which is just a sphere that we add some noise to and over to the right we have another sphere which is actually just one point so this sphere is set to type primitive so we don't have any polygons so basically this is only one point. And inside this attribute vop, which I will simply rename to dot product, we have our dot product operation. So here is our dot product, and this will now look at the normal and a vector that we generate using this sphere as the second input in our source. So basically, from this sphere, we create a vector that points to each point on this geometry, which looks a little something like this. Okay, so inside this dot product, we import the position of this sphere with this import point. And if I subtract the position of the points on this geometry over here, we can normalize this vector and I export it to a vector attribute that's called direction. So I can create a visualizer for this. So this is a visualizer for the direction attribute. And this goes inside this dot product function. And for the second input of this dot product, we will simply use the normal, which I can also preview in the viewport if I turn on normal display. Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, a dot product will take two vectors and will output a float value based on the angle between the vectors. So for example, if I were to just look at one point on the surface, and let's choose the wireframe view by hitting W, and I'll step inside Photoshop for a bit and try to explain this. So if I were to isolate a point here on the surface geometry and we have our two vectors, so we have the direction attribute that we created pointing in this direction and we have the normal pointing in the opposite direction or let's say roughly opposite direction. The dot product will look at these two vectors and will look at the angle that these two vectors form and in this case, let's say that the vector is roughly 180 degrees. So if the angle between these is 180, this will now output a dot product of negative 1. And if these vectors were to point in the same direction, so if my normal were to point in the same direction as, as my direction attribute, so the angle between the vectors would be something like zero, so basically non-existent as they point in the same direction, this will now mean that the dot product will output a value of one. So this is positive one. And if the normal vector were perpendicular to my direction vector, so something like this, this will now mean that the angle is 90 degrees. So now the dot product will output a value halfway between 1 and negative 1, which will be 0. And let's maybe just make this a little bit less transparent. So just as a final example, let's say maybe that our normal is pointing in this direction. Now this will give me a value. So this angle now might become something like 100 and, I don't know, 31. So now this maybe will mean a value of negative point, uh, 0 0.7, so something like this. And this is a very rough estimate. So it's just to reinforce the point that I'm trying to make with this dot product. So now back in Houdini, we can see that maybe for this point over here, the vectors are roughly opposite. So now this point will have a dot product value of 1. And this dot product I output inside the CD attribute. So now the CD color for this point will be 1 and if I were to go on the other side we can see that maybe for this point over here the vectors are pointing roughly in the same direction so this will give me a value close to negative 1 if they were both pointing exactly in the same direction it will give me precisely negative 1 in this case it would be maybe something like negative 0 0.7 
and when this value gets plugged into the CD attribute, this will now turn black. And if I were to add a ramp between the dot product and the CD, so I filter this through a ramp, and I turn this on, and I go back, we can reverse the ramp values. Now we can see that the opposite side is lit, and we have dark spots over here on this other side. And if I were to turn off the visualizers, and maybe adjust this ramp, I can sort of squeeze these uh, values that the dot product creates with this ramp, and we can see now that we can light up the part that is pointing towards the sphere. And as I move the sphere around, the vector recomputes, and the surface geometry will update to follow this sphere wherever it goes. So this is a very useful effect when you want to do something like having, uh, let's say that this geometry is something like a mountain and we want snow or rain to only affect the top surface of this mountain, we could use the dot product to generate a vector, compare it with our normals and isolate the surface that we want to be covered. So I, I would move this around and if I place this on top, we can see maybe that this is something like a rock that has moss covered over it, or snow or rain. And we actually don't need to use this sphere at all, so back inside this dot product, I can simply specify a vector here, so I don't really need all of this. So instead of generating a vector using the sphere, I can simply drop down a parameter, and I will make this a tree floats, and plug this into our first input. And if I go up, if I set the y value to 1, so this is now a simply a vector that points up. We compare it with the normal and it gives us this effect. Okay, and I can modify this ram now to isolate exactly the surface that I'm after. Okay, so I can make some adjustments here and hopefully you get the idea. So this is the dot product.